Hi, everybody. Thanks for taking the time. This is Atash Amir, CEO of Card Starter. And I just want to quickly introduce the Immunify. And yeah, just wanted to introduce the Immunify team. So I'm going to actually let them do the honors. Um, we can start with Omar. Uh, Omar, Hello. why don't you tell us a little bit about the project and introduce yourself, and then we'll go through the line, and then we'll start with the questions. Yeah, totally. Thank you guys for coming along. This is very exciting. Um, <laughs> it's been a long time coming, so it's great to be up here. Um, yeah, I'll just talk a little, a little bit about myself. Um, Omar, I am the advisor, consultant, and project manager of Immunify.life. I've been working with Guy and the team for oof, many years now. 2017, I think we started this vision. And we are here today and very excited about it. Um, I'll leave, I'll give it to Guy to do the introduction to the project, I think. He's got a good grasp of it and he's, he, yeah, he's good at doing that. So head over to you, Guy. Well, thanks very much for that uh, compliment, Omar. Nice to get off on a positive note. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> I've been uh, in healthcare for more than 30 years. I've worked for uh, large multinational pharma companies in Australia and Asia, and I've had several successful healthcare businesses. And I've lived and worked in over 50 countries around the world. Um, but it was during a, a visit to the Congo around four years ago that I was struck by a huge inequity in terms of health around the world. Like in Australia, where I live now, the average life expectancy is 90 years. Now, if you're unlucky enough to be born in the Congo uh, and you're a man, your life expectancy is 59. So I started thinking about what can we do to address that inequity. And so... That was what set me on the realization, set me on the journey with Immunify Life. And so our vision is to use blockchain technology to improve the health and lives of people less fortunate. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically who I am and uh, what I stand for. And uh, I'm very proud that we are uh, working together in a global team to try and make a difference. Fantastic. All right. And John? Hello, guys. Uh, my name is actually Diego. I use John Gold, that's my crypto uh, friendly nickname. And that is because I am from Buenos Aires, Argentina, which is a developing country. And sometimes you need to use a different nickname when you want to deal with cryptocurrencies. Not nowadays, but seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, that was the case. So I just stick with John Gold. I'm pretty excited. I am the CTO. I'm pretty excited to be uh, working on this project. Fantastic. And we have Owen here, the project manager for Immunify.life. Uh, hey, guys. Thanks, Atash. Uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. So I'm uh, working with the Card Starter team, and I am the, the project manager for the Immunify, uh, Immunify guys, and I'm their main point of contact here at Card Starter, uh, helping facilitate this, this process, getting set up for, for the IDO and everything that we needed to do to, to prepare for that and prepare for a successful launch. And yeah, I'm going to kind of run through some, some questions here with the Immunify team. And now that we've done introductions, we can kind of get more into uh, the project and, and what we have here to, to be excited about in the, the coming weeks and, and months. So the, the first one I want to kind of address is uh, what what is the problem that that you guys are solving? And and I'll kind of um, leave it to each of you, Omar Guy or, or John, to kind of jump in as you see fit here, uh, with uh, as we kind of proceed through the questions. Okay, great. Why don't I take this one then? Uh, I think the, the fundamental problem we're we're solving is a lack of financial resources. Uh, in in Africa, I mean, in OECD countries, we spend around 10% of our GDP on uh, health. But in sub-Saharan Africa, it's less than half that and down as low as 3% in, in some countries. So basically, they are not spending enough on, on, on health care. And they're very dependent on international aid to provide treatment and supplies. And so uh, every day, every year, millions of people die from preventable illnesses like uh, even malnutrition, gastroenteritis, but also tuberculosis, HIV, malaria. Uh, because they don't have the money, they have to rely on paper-based systems to track and record treatments. Um, they've got a real shortage of healthcare workers there as well. I mean, there's 47 countries in sub-Saharan Africa, and between them, they're probably short around 2.5 million healthcare workers. Uh, they don't have access to the right medical treatments, and these people are poor. They might earn 2 to $5 US a day, so they can't even take off time to go and see the doctor when they're sick. 
And because of this uh, and, uh, and the lack of money, there's also a lot of corruption. So you see patients going to multiple medical clinics to, uh, you know, get medicines to sell on the black market. And we see government officials, you know, stealing uh, medications as well. So it's a pretty sad picture. And when you look at it in the context of COVID, which is sweeping the world now, um, what we see is the pro proliferation of fake vaccination certificates that you can buy in the black market. Uh, and fake drugs as well. You can actually, people are uh, packaging up fake, you know, water and putting it into COVID vials and trying to sell that as well. So there's a whole plethora of very serious problems that um, luckily blockchain technology is in great position to help uh, address. Right. So, yeah, there's a, a, a whole host of issues there. And, and you mentioned, you know, blockchain is kind of poised to, to help address those guys. I think you guys are definitely taking a unique angle at this. You know, the, these are these are um, deep systemic issues that have existed in a lot of these countries for a long time. And I'm wondering, can you can you tell us a little bit more about how you guys kind of uh, came this route as, as determining that blockchain could actually be a, a sig give a significant advantage and help to address these issues? Yeah, I think that's a good point. Omar, you've got a few ideas on this one, haven't you? Yeah, it uh, depends how you look at it. I mean, we all are familiar with blockchain technology and all the different layers of blockchain technology. And um, there's so many different industries, you know, pivoting over to blockchain for the, the, the key reasons. Um, and so essentially, we're, uh, we're able to create an ecosystem here. Um, and of course, uh, with using NFTs, uh, with identification, linking it to that on a private layer, um, you, you just can't do that in the real world. And also tapping in and like just following transactions and the flow of vaccine supply chain. It's just you can't do it anywhere else. So it's blockchain is a perfect fit when it comes to data, when it comes to identification, and when it comes down to incentivization and, uh, yeah, just creating an ecosystem here. Um, so, yeah, it's very exciting. Diego, do you have anything to add there? Well, uh, my only, what I would like to add here is that um, really from a developing country perspective, I think this is pretty, it's pretty important because I've seen it like I was born and I live in a developing country. And really blockchain, the first use case of blockchain, which was Bitcoin back 10 years ago, is really making a difference. So now we are in a position to move to the next stage, which is what are the other use cases in which we can leverage crypto first in the in developing countries. And, and I tell you, living here, I, I, I see the real value this is going to provide to all of us. Yeah, I might just add in a little bit here too. I think that initially attracted me to the idea of using blockchain as opposed to sort of cloud-based medical record systems. The fact that it's immutable, it's time-stamped, you can't tinker with the records once they're created, uh, it's unhackable. And when you're talking about the security of medical information, the worst thing in the world would be for the president of Nigeria's health system to go, to go public or his health record. So it's a secure thing. And also, because we've got this behavior change tool that we're using, which uh, using NFTs to reward, uh, sorry, to use um, token, Unify Life tokens to reward healthcare workers and patients for doing the right thing, I don't think there's any other way you could practically do that. So we're creating a system where if, if they turn up for their vaccinations or they turn up, they visit the clinics to get their HIV medication, they can actually get rewarded with tokens, which... You know, it's pretty. It's the first time I think it's ever been done to drive behaviour, but it's. Uh, I don't think you could do it without blockchain. Awesome, thanks for that, guys. And and yeah, I think Diego, you made a really good point there. Is that we've you know we've seen the impact that that blockchain has had in developing countries. Um, you know, just in the financial sector already, and I think. The, the, one of the next steps here is to move into some other sectors where there are huge gaps to fill and healthcare is, is obviously one of those. So, um, you know, the timing is, is right for, for folks like you guys and at, at Immunify to be stepping in and, and finding ways uh, to solve those problems using blockchain. Um, and to that point, I'm, I'm wondering, can you just, could you guys maybe give us a little more insight into how Immunify is going to uh, tackle this stuff? Okay, well, let me have a crack at that. I mean, uh, 
basically what we're trying to do. I'll give a run through of the system. Uh, imagine the situation. Um, a patient turns up at the clinic. Uh, he might have had to have worked, walked three or four hours to get there. And the first thing that's going to happen is he's going to be basically KYC'd. Um, there'll be multiple points of identification, his phone number, date of birth, ID documents. Uh, it's got The system's got the capacity to uh, upload images, either of a passport or the person's pic or their face, so that uh, you, first of all, you know exactly who you're dealing with there. Because in Africa, they have unusual naming conventions. You might have a first name and then you might be named after the village you live in. So they're people with multiple names. A lot of times they don't even have a birth certificate, so it's very hard to know who you're doing. So first thing is we basically identify them. The other thing we do is we capture the batch details of the vaccination. So um, that can be then cross-referenced with authentic batch numbers so that you've got the two things you need to uh, be to deliver effective treatment. You know who the person is and you know what medication they're getting. And then uh, the patient... Uh, is recruited into the system. They get uh, one automatically generated one-time password, which uh, gives them the chance to opt in or opt out of the system. Uh, they get uh, the opportunity to get informed consent about their medical data being shared, but without their name and identifiers on it, of course. Uh, and they, that's when they're issued with their reward wallet so they can in future participate and get re rewards for doing the right thing. And then the system, once they're in the system, anywhere they go in the country, whether they go to a pharmacy, a laboratory, a hospital, a clinic, there's a central medical record, which is updated over time, that tracks them. And that way you get critical medical data captured real time, uh, right down to the location. And so in a sense, that's the, the nucleus of the system. Great. Thanks, Guy. Uh, Omar or, or uh, Diego, did you guys want to touch on anything there? No, I think that was well covered. Awesome. Uh, right. So, I mean, I'm, I, well, obviously, I've been uh, in close contact with you guys over the last three months and, and have some insight into how things are going. And I know that there's a lot of... Um, a lot of work being done behind the scenes in developing uh, pilots. Oh, have we lost you, Owen? I think we've lost him. <laughs> All right. Well, in the meantime, until he gets back, uh, we've got Tony here. Yeah. Hi. Thanks. Um, yeah. So we lost one and we gained one. Um, sorry, <laughs> your technical difficulties. Uh, my name is Tony Walden. Um, I'm beaming to you live from Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, we, I am the blockchain and gamification advisor at Immunify.life. So, yeah, just been busy, busy with these guys and this team. Um, and we've got a lot to, to talk to you about. So, yeah, quick introduction a little bit late and go ahead, the rest of the team. Is Owen back? Have we got him? I think. Owen, are you here? Uh, I'm here. Sorry, did I lose you guys for a moment there? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, you did. Yes, <laughs> but we took that opportunity to introduce Tony, so all is well. Everybody's here, the whole team is here, and we can continue. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so, sorry about that, everybody. Didn't realize that I, I lost connection there. Um, yeah, I, I think, I, I'm not sure where I cut off, but what I was... What I was uh, wanted to ask the Munify guys there is, I was just saying, I, I know there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, um, making connections and, and partnerships and building relationships with, with governments in, in Africa at the moment and, and developing pilots there. And I know not all of it is able to be made uh, public at this point, but I'm just wondering if you guys could share some of the progress that's that's been made so far, what you, what you are able to share with us at this point anyway. Yeah, sure. Uh, we... We do, I meant to have uh, Daniel Kenny as well here, who was going to do that. Is, uh, uh, are you there, Daniel? Yeah, he's our chief of staff, so he's um, he would be able to cover because he's doing direct conversations yeah, with these I'm, governments. Yeah, I, mean, I can, I can serve it. To, I can serve oh, yeah, it he's coming up on stage now. Th there, yeah, uh, we've got Daniel joining in just a moment. We'll give him a, a chance to connect here. Yeah. Yeah, so this is one of the things while Daniel's getting ready that uh, I think our project is a little bit different from um, perhaps other blockchain projects is that probably my fault, actually. Um, I focus more on the implementation side of things, you know, getting the networks of customers up front, building the tech, 
rather than focusing immediately on the community management because that's more of an old school way of doing things. Uh, so the social media work is catching up uh, with the implementation side. So if there's anyone out there listening who likes what they're hearing, please uh, fo start following us on the socials and uh, uh, to get the updates and to uh, check out the technology. So are you, th are you there, Daniel? Yes. Hello, Guy. Hello, everyone. Um, sorry for coming in a little late. I'm uh, Daniel Kenny, uh, Chief Operating Officer at Immunify Life. Like Guy, I come with a background in clinical research and working in uh, big pharma for 30 plus years. Um, Immunify Life is now ready with an alpha form of its tech for use in COVID-19 and HIV AIDS. We have uh, developing partnerships in Cameroon with two clinics there. Uh, we have been talking with the Commonwealth Medical Association after an outreach to the Commonwealth Secretariat in London. So we will hopefully be rolling out the uh, pilot studies with our Alpha Tech version uh, in, in, in as early as next month. So things are starting to happen. We're working with EMUS, the leading university in Kenya, and we ultimately will, in, in the coming weeks and months, give an update to the community about the rollout of our pilot. So the real user case is real, and we're in active preparations to start uh, using the technology in screening patients and monitoring patients with COVID-19 and their vaccinations. Awesome. That, that's uh, really exciting stuff, Daniel. And like, w would you be able to give us a, a little more insight into what those pilot studies look like and what we could expect over the next uh, next couple months, next few months as those develop? Yes, certainly. Um, in the Kenyan clinic working with the university, um, we will basically be screening patients to prove the real world use of the technology, our ability to screen patients, to grant consent, uh, to uh, capture all the relevant clinical data for these patients, and then to interact with the patient to issue them a vaccination certificate. That's for COVID, and that's obviously a pressing, a pressing need. But equally, in working with these clinics, we've also identified, obviously, as many people will know, that HIV AIDS is still a huge burden in countries in not just sub-Saharan Africa, but also most countries in Africa, unfortunately. So one of the pilots will also focus on uh, HIV AIDS, once again, being able to screen patients, collect their data, and have the patient be able to utilize their data capture on their on their own mobile phone. So over the coming weeks and months, we'll be sharing with the community uh, the rollout of these pilots in Kenya. With some of the interactions we're having with the Commonwealth Medical Association, the president of the Commonwealth Medical Association is Nigerian, and he is naturally a proud Nigerian, and he wants to have uh, the Immunify Life Solution and our Alpha Tech uh, pilots to, to actually be undertaken in Nigeria. So we, we have a lot of exciting news to share with, with these developing partnerships, but with the real world application of treating patients. One final aside, um, the COVAX vaccination program is rolling out very slowly in Africa. And we are seeing in first world and in the emerging countries and particularly low income countries, uh, the need for vaccinations and the need to, sh to ensure that patients are vaccinated and their data is captured so that they will be able to move, to be able to earn income and to travel from, from one part of their country to another. And the unique part of our technology is an ability to provide a vaccination certificate at the end of their vaccination program. So a lot to share in the future. Uh, so as they say, watch this space. Yeah. Daniel, can I just add a little bit there too? I mean, I'm particularly excited about the Kenyan work because, uh, one, they're a great university and their vision is they want to pilot with us or work with us for the next five years. So we're fleshing out the MOU now, but to be uh, really be world leaders in sort of examining and uh, looking at ways to improve uh, HIV treatment rates. Uh, a lot of you listeners may not know that Kenya is, I think, the third highest incidence of HIV in the world. That There's over one and a half million people with HIV and it's about 5% of the population. And in the area we want to do the study, it's around, it's more than 10% of the population have HIV. And you would not believe it, although there are medications available there for treatment, 
around 25% of adults do not take the drugs. They, they lapse. And often it's because of just time. They, they can't, they're so poor, they, can't, they don't have time to take off work to, to complete the course of medication. And it's actually worse in children. Uh, so we're going to be doing a study, a welfare study, to look at how we can use uh, token rewards, Immunify Life token rewards, to improve the compliance of people who are living with AIDS. This is the deadly preventable disease that um, at the moment they're just not complying with treatment. So that sort of research is global level research that would be of international interest. So we're very excited about that one. Awesome, guys. It's, yeah, it's great to hear um, the work that's been done already and, and uh, you know, these relationships being built and uh, excited to really start seeing some results here and seeing the ways that Immunify could really help to impact fighting these diseases, not just in Africa, but but uh, around the world. And, you know, COVID is obviously something that we've all been impacted by and have... Um, it, you know, it's on the top of everybody's mind for how we're going to, you know, continue to move forward in the in the coming months around the world with with fighting this disease. And uh, I know that you guys have been paying special attention to that, and you have some plans for how Immunify can uh, directly um, start to have an impact in the fight against COVID. And I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. Uh Shall I start on that one? Um, yeah, so uh, what we, as I mentioned earlier, at the point of a contact uh, with the, the patient and the, the clinic, we'll, coll we'll collect their data, we'll know who they are, and we'll know what medications they've got. So then we'll be able to give the patient the option of creating their own individual NFT. It's an NFT that captures um, their vaccination record. And uh, it's completely unique to them, only belongs to them. Uh, and uh, this is a world first. I mean, we've all heard of NFTs being used for, you know, punk art and being sold for $8 million or whatever it was, or, or for capturing sports cards. But we are using NFTs in a way that really, really will transform lives. Imagine if you are living, say, in the Congo and you want to go and uh, get a job with an international airline. How are you going to prove to that organization without a shadow of a doubt that you've been it's you that's been vaccinated and that you've had an authentic treatment so by them uh, being able to uh, create an nft which is a one-of-a-kind unique link to their identity um, that gives them that chance to travel internationally or to get a job um, in industry where they require identification and again, this is something that really uh, is is completely new, and you know what a what a brilliant use of blockchain technology. And guy, if I could dive in there as well, I think the one beauty of the technology and the Immunify solution is not just what it brings to the individual patient, but many of the COVID globally has put stress on even the most sophisticated, well resourced healthcare systems. And in Africa, we know that the lack of integrated and accurate real-time systems for tracing large populations at various stages of COVID has had an impact, continues to have an impact, and will, will continue to wreak havoc on the health of, of the nation, both economically and also uh, medically. So a solution like this allows people and allows the clinics and the health system to be enhanced. One of the reasons why I've joined Immunify Life is the impact it can have on an individual patient, which is very clear, but also how it can enhance the healthcare system by being able to have, by being able to enhance integration and real time monitoring and real time tracing of populations, particularly with an infectious disease. And we see this application for any communicable disease, particularly obviously COVID. Yeah, and just speaking to that, I mean, um, here in New Zealand, we've just had a, a, a snap lockdown. So we, we, we got the we were sort of six hours notice and then we're locked down level four. Um, and really what, what really will help globally is the decisions that will be able to be made at real time from our system. So just to look into the de-identified de data at the back end, uh, we're running an AI over that data. Um, clinical trials with, with our partners with that AI have shown that when running in pharmaceutical trials, that AI has saved uh, over 3,000 clinician hours to come up with a decision. 
and it delivers that decision in minutes. So we're really talking about a disease like COVID, which is so infectious and just spreads, you know, really, well, just all around the place, that to be able to make a decision, which would normally take you 3,000 hours to crunch and make that within minutes and, and then be know that that decision is, is the right one on the day that you've got it at the moment, be confident about it and um, act. So I think that's just going to revolutionise government's ability to make the right decision in these moments of crisis. Right. Yeah, it, it sounds like if, um, you know, if, if our governments and if around the world we had been using technology similar to Immunify um, already, that it would have perhaps given us a better ability to manage this pandemic in the early stages and maybe uh, end up in a better spot than a lot, a lot of countries did in the beginning. And... Uh, yeah, and, and and Guy and da- and Daniel, to your to your points there around the use of NFTs here, you know, I think we we've seen um, there's been a lot of attention paid to yeah NFTs in the in the art world, and um, but it's exciting to st- start to see them come into place in other parts of um, in, in other other sectors and, uh, real world use cases for, for NFTs in, um, places like healthcare work, we can actually make like a massive impact, uh, directly on people's lives and, and really improve, uh, the livelihood of, of large amounts of people. And when it comes down to, to the technology, to the blockchain specific, um, you know, you guys have, have big plans to, to uh, operate on Cardano, and I'm wondering if you can just tell us a little bit more about uh, about why why you chose Cardano and, and what has you excited about um, you know the mainnet going live here pretty pretty soon on September 12th. I think uh, was the last date that we heard. Yeah, let me address that one. So Cardano is one of the top three uh, blockchains out there. If you consider the market capitalization as a proxy of the real, the community acceptance of the technology in which it's based. So it's the first, third, third generation blockchain. So Bitcoin was the first one, Ethereum is the second one, and Cardano comes here to provide like, upon the experience of the two previous blockchain, to provide like the next generation with low fees, of course, and uh, a throughput speed that is uh, orders of magnitude higher than what we can achieve right now with Ethereum and, of course, Bitcoin. So um, that is the reason. So at the technology, uh, from, the, from the technology perspective, these are the reasons why we choose Cardano. But there is also a vision alignment at the project level. So uh, maybe you, Omar, want to go into details about that, or Guy? Yeah. Um, so, of course, we all know about IOHK um, and Cardano, their main focus as we all know, is Africa. I mean, it's globally, but they're doing big rollouts over in Africa at the moment and Nigeria, of course, and any parts of Africa. So immunify.life, we have connections on the ground. We are rolling out there as well as from what Danny Danny said, um, Kenya, Cameroon, there's a few other ones, countries that we will mention down the track. Um, But we've got connections into those areas we have been talking to IOHK. We have been talking about the Atala Prism um, KYC protocol, uh, plugging into immunify.life. Um, and look, we, we've just got a synergy there. We're all aligned on, in, in the same boat, doing the same thing. And Kadana for us, I mean, <laughs> I've been a heavy investor and watching this protocol for many years now, ever since 2017. Um, and I mean, just the team itself, what they're building, the robust nature of the decentralization and the proof of stake, they've already rolled that out. So we, 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 it's all plus. It's all, we're very excited about Cardano and um, yeah, we are looking forward to rolling out. So those are some of the key points. And of course, when it comes to NFTs, um, something we haven't mentioned yet is when it comes to the, the user on the ground, there's no fee for the end user, um, which is huge for these poorer com- um, countries, like in Africa, third world emerging co- um, countries. So there is no fee there. So when it comes to minting NFTs, sending transactions, it's very expensive on some of these other networks as Ethereum. You're seeing gas fees for minting these NFTs up to 50 to, what was the other day for one one I was doing $2,000. <laughs> to do a it was a well, it was a huge smart contract but it, it it's just not feasible and then with Cardano's technology on how they're building these nfts 
down to a minimum nothing to minting these NFTs. They're not even doing it on a minting level. So um, low fees, speed, and decentralized nature of the network for us is a key point. And of course, the synergy and the connection between um, Cardano and these emerging companies and, and countries. Yeah, that's right. I think to me, to summarize that, we, we really see very strongly that we've got great strategic and technological alignment with them. So, And I like the values too. I like the work, work they're doing with World Mobile. And uh, their vision is more than just being a blockchain company. You know, they're really trying to uh, transform, you know, uh, Africa in particular. And that's what we, we are about as well. Well, well said, guys. Well said. And, uh, you know, here at Cardstarter, we were excited about all the same things that uh, especially Omar, you, you touched on there. And that's what has us and, you know, so many projects that are, are launching through us uh, really excited about the what the future holds here and, and how Cardano is going to change things. Um, we're I, I want to uh, touch a bit now on just some maybe some other partnerships that you guys have been working on. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, I have some insight into what's going on behind the scenes here, but uh, just whatever. Uh, I know there's probably some that, that we can't touch on yet, but um, some that maybe you guys would like to share with uh, with the public at this point and talk about some of the the other um, organizations that uh, that you've been speaking with at this point and that you're excited about working with uh, soon. Uh Okay, I'll, I can start with that. Um, one of the ones that we've been in discussion with uh, is a company, a financial services company in Africa called Interswitch, Interswitch and they're partly owned by Visa. Uh, they've, they've got 22 million customers in Nigeria. They've also got a footprint in Kenya and other African countries. And what part of their services, they provide debit cards to, um, to Africans. And one of the issues in Africa is, uh, as I've mentioned before, sometimes it's hard to establish your identity. And a lot of people in Africa are, are unbanked. They don't have bank accounts. They just use cash and uh, they have no way of really uh, saving or paying people. With, with. And so Interswitch have got onto this and provide uh, this debit card, which is a Verve card. And so uh, they're very interested in working with us because they can see the value of integrating a token system with a financial system so that... Um, as our system grows and there's millions and millions of people uh, being recruited, then the, there'll be a link to a, de a debit card. So that's a, that's a very interesting one. Um, uh, and uh, the other one I should mention probably is LTI, that's Larson Tubro Infotech. They're a te tech um, development company, $1.5 billion company, in revenue around the world in over 30 countries. They're huge. They've got 70-plus clients in the Fortune 500 and they've got verticals in banking, healthcare, supply chain management. And they've also done what I like about them as well. They've done blockchain projects in Africa before in supply chain. And um, they're going to be helping us with our tech strategy and tech development. And they've also got a really smart artificial intelligence analytics engine called Lenny. It's been rated as one of the best artificial intelligence engines in the world by, you know, on several different, by seven several different organizations and so we are going to have Lenny sitting on top of the data that we collect so that it's more than just giving people a, a governments and NGOs here's a big file of data we'll be able to provide them with the, one of the smartest analytical tools that's available on the planet to be able to use that data for maximum benefit you know tracking hot spots doing predictive analysis about uh, what happens if we invested more money in treating HIV versus tuberculosis, what would our um, you know, improvement in health outcomes be, uh, what can we do, what different preventative measures work more effectively. And that will also be a revenue stream for us because uh, we have a, a, a partnership with LTI, so we'll be able to offer the Lenny package on top of the data packages that we offer to create more revenue and also get better value from the, the money. So there are two of the, two of the uh, main ones. Um, I, Guy, if I could dive in as well, just to share with the, those on the call. Um, there's a number of other partnerships that we're happy to share some details about. Uh, earlier this year, we talked to the Commonwealth Secretariat in London about the applicability 
of using the Immunify solution to support the healthcare systems in in Commonwealth countries with a particular focus on those Commonwealth countries. There's 52 countries in the Commonwealth, from countries like New Zealand, Australia and Canada to small uh, Asian Pacific countries and obviously uh, a whole myriad of countries uh, in, in um, Africa like Nigeria and Kenya. The Commonwealth Secretariat was impressed with our healthcare solution. They put us in touch with uh, a Dr. Mbule, the president of the Commonwealth Medical Association, and that comprises chief medical officers from all the 52 Commonwealth countries. And his recommendation was that we should seriously look at piloting the technology in as many African countries as possible with the goal to having a full country implementation in due course. And with that um, encouragement, we've continued to talk to our Kenyan colleagues uh, at the at the Emus University, which is Kenya's leading technological and scientific research university. And we are nearing completion of a, a memorandum of understanding, which will take us from taking our alpha grade tech all the way through to a full country implementation. So this is already in, in the works. So we're seeing synergy between government organizations, NGOs and universities to move forward uh, on a full country implementation. And of course, with the discussions with InterSwitch that Guy referred to earlier, as patients will be incentivized through the token to attend clinic, to be rewarded for attendance, for taking their medication, they will receive those tokens. And with a, with a financial service company like InterSwitch, which operates in both Nigeria and Kenya, there's an opportunity for the patient to be able to exchange that token for real world cash and services. So what I would like to share with everyone is that there's a series of partnerships and we're seeing synergistic connections between Commonwealth Secretariat in London right through to a university clinic in the outskirts of Nairobi. And that's really exciting user case, a really exciting application of the technology. And we look forward to sharing uh, the fruits of these discussions with uh, signed partnerships moving forward. Yeah, we're obviously working on some other partnerships as well. What I'm very excited about a couple in the telecommunications space, but it's a little bit too early to be talking about them in great detail. But you can imagine that uh, because the system is very simple and it, it, all it needs is a mobile a phone network to operate in, and it can be used just on a smartphone. Uh, and we will be giving uh, patients token rewards, there's natural synergies with some of these big, uh, huge um, telecommunication companies. And we're, we've had some initial discussions and people are they're very, very enthusiastic, but it's a bit too early to give, uh, you know, the names and the details of them. Mm. Uh, just uh, just speak up here. We also have, I'm, I'm making connections with a lot of Cardano um, coins as well. Other projects out there like Charlie 3, we partnered with them. Um, we've also got a good list of advisors on board that have built oof, conglomerate projects like uh, Alliance Block, Spider Dow, uh, Bridge Protocol. We've got a new marketing team that's on board as well, trying to help us network and um, just grow as as um, as a project. So yeah, we've also we're in talks with some other uh, projects as well that is aligned with us and going to help us to do what we need to do, especially for our DeFi layer moving over to Cardano. We do have a couple of key elements there. We haven't really gone too much into that, but we definitely could have another conversation about that. If there's any questions around that later on, please feel free to jump into our Telegram and ask the questions. We'll be able to um, answer them there. But yeah, especially when it comes to DeFi on Cardano, it's very different to DeFi on um, Ethereum. So we do need some of the experts and DEXs in there, Sunday, Swap. And um, yeah, so we're very excited about those and we'll release those down the track. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Really a, a lot to be excited about there for sure. And I think we're um, we're coming up on a, a good time now to maybe let some, some folks from the audience up for some questions here and uh, give them a chance to, to um, talk with you guys and, and let them let you guys know what uh, they find most interesting here or what questions they have for you about the, the future of Unify. Um, and maybe, Atash, do you want to give me a hand with how we can uh, get some folks from the audience up here to ask questions? Yeah, no problem at all. 
Um, so basically, you guys will have to request to speak, uh, and then it'll put you in a queue, and then we will bring you up. Um, all right. So it looks like we have uh, Rami up first. Okay. Rami, you're on stage. Hey, everyone. Hey, thanks for putting this together. Um, so I, I work in healthcare in the United States, and uh, Immunify sounds like a really terrific project. I'm really excited about really any application of blockchain in, in the healthcare industry. Uh, it's, so it seems clear that the immediate roadmap for Immunify targets communities in the developing world where there's clearly a pressing need. Um, but uh, as I'm sure a lot of you know, there's, there's a lot of work to be done here in the U.S. as well, where we have really poor health outcomes, um, high rates of healthcare inequity, and yet we spend more of a percent on our GDP on healthcare than any other country in the world. So my question is, do you see, um, do you see any realistic role for Immunify in a country like the United States? And if so, what does that role look like? Uh, I might take that one. It's a very, very good question, Rami. And uh, I've thought about that myself, too. I think the U.S. is spending 15, 16 percent of their GDP on health. And uh, as you say, uh, uh, in some areas, the health outcomes are, uh, are, are very, very um, meager, to say the least. Um, I think our priority is with the emerging economies. But um, it's not to say I wouldn't be against considering it. Um, the issue we've got there is there's a lot of legacy systems already in place. Uh, you know, doctors and clinics are already using their own systems, their own electronic medical record systems in a lot of places. And so uh, transi transitioning from a legacy system to, you know, our system, is, I think it's going to be harder, whereas the countries we were visiting in Africa have just basically got pieces of paper. Um, so in, in some ways, they're going to be leapfrogging uh, even countries like Australia. But look, uh, we're certainly open to it, and, and if there's, there's there's ways that we can make a difference, you know, particularly it might be in smaller communities in remote areas or things like that where they don't have access to uh, the good infrastructure, then uh, I think we'd certainly be open to it. But it's not part of our core strategy. Uh, thanks, Guy, and th thanks, Rami, for that, that great question. Uh, looks like we've got someone else in the the queue here so we've got Paul let's go let Paul up uh, all right Paul you're on stage uh, Paul if you're there we we should be able to hear you now if you if you can speak okay sorry about that my mic was off Paul Chavez here, um, founder and executive director of a behavioral health opioid treatment program. And I guess my comment was in the spirit of Rami's uh, here in the United States, uh, the need for a simple capacity to reward clients for uh, improving their behaviors on a day-to-day -day basis and tracking that in, in some simple way. Um, I think that, that there's a lot of need here in, in our country, uh, in the United States, um, for for substance use and mental health, um, but maybe the answer was kind of at the end there that it's it's not on the immediate roadmap. But uh, that was uh, my question also: is is we have such a strong need in the United States for for that on the behavioral health side? But yeah, well, I, look, I think um, what would be great for our business is if we could have uh, examples of successful you know deployment, maybe uh, clinical work being done. Uh, in the area of addiction, for example, or in small areas, that would help our strengthen our case for our main game, which is you know uh, impacting on the lives of millions of people in these really poor countries. So, uh, in that particular example, um, that could be very interesting. And I am aware of data from I think the 70s and 80s, which showed that with opioid addiction, you could actually you can make a difference with financial rewards. So. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of if you put into a, a, a in terms of a clinical research uh, part of our strategy, then I think it's it's more strategically aligned. I'd be happy to talk to you more about it offline if you wanted to. Oh, I'd I'd really love that. I literally uh, head over to the Sam's. Oh, that, that's too bad. Oh wait, uh, we lost Paul for a sec, but I think we're getting him back. Paul, are you there still? Uh, 
Okay. We could uh, just, yeah, okay. Yeah. We could we'll, just link, we'll link up with him. him. Yeah, unfortunately, we, I think we lost him there. But yeah, um, yeah, Paul, feel, feel free to reach out to the Immunified guys uh, offline, and it, it sounds like they'd be happy to chat with you further. Um, yeah, please come into our Telegram and yeah, um, ask your questions there. Great. Uh, okay, we don't have, I don't have anybody else uh, requesting to speak here. One last opportunity, uh, anyone who has a question, just put your um, request to, to speak and we can let you on stage. Uh, okay, I've got, I've got Paul uh, asking to come back up. We'll, we'll let Paul up again just to see if he had a follow-up question there. Yeah, we can hear you, Paul. I'd look forward to connecting after. And I just wanted to mention that on a weekly basis, I'm heading over to the Walmart and picking up, uh, you know, one to $2,000 worth of uh, $20 gift cards and then getting them to all my therapists. And then they're handing them out to all of the clients. Uh, we have a uh, hundred clients plus every day that come for opioid treatment. And um, then they, they, because they're going to their mental and emotional health training they're getting rewarded for that consistency. And uh, we're having uh, phenomenal results with, with uh, participation. And, and it, it's, it's just been great. But, I mean, it's so cumbersome to track and reward uh, with how, how we're doing it now. So I, I look forward to, to talking more with uh, you all in, in uh, another time. It sounds very interesting. Great. Yeah. Sounds like there's a good pilot opportunity yeah. there. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I pre appreciate that, Paul. And th thanks for the, that follow-up comment there. Uh, sounds like you're uh, basically executing something similar to Immunify, but uh, manually at the moment. So <laughs> definitely, definitely a, a need there, you know, and, and uh, the fact that he's seen just the way that uh, incentivizing people to, um, you know, seek out that, that healthcare treatment uh, is, is actually working on the ground is, is a great real life uh, use case. Um, so we don't have, we don't have anybody else um, waiting in the queue here to, to ask a question, but we're coming up on time uh, anyway, actually. So I, th I feel like this is a good, good place to wrap it up. And uh, Immunify guys, I'll, I'll just pass it over to you one last time. Uh, any final thoughts uh, that you want to want to share with the group here before we before we sign off? Uh, well, I would just like to thank everybody for uh, uh, to taking the time to listen. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are really focused on building our community. It'll be very helpful to um, uh, work up support us when we come to launching. So, if you're interested, please join us on our Twitter Telegram programs and uh, we, you get more updates on what we're doing. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to uh, making a difference. Yes, guys, um, just over my head, just want to say, yeah, thank you everyone so far for the support. Uh, you've had some really good questions in our Telegram. Thank you, Cardstarter as well. Um, we've been working with you guys for many months now um, and it's been great. You've been helping us as a project, building us, and um, we're very looking forward to, you know, continuing this, continuing this partnership. Um, I guess just to finalize everything with Immunify.life, it, it does come back to the token. And if you, we, we do do deeper dives into, you know, why does Immunify.life need a token? There's many different reasons for that. So we're happy to discuss that in, in our group as well. And we are going to be releasing some more videos um and walkthroughs of our you know uh, of our tech um so it's very exciting and yeah thank you very much for being here guys okay all right guys yeah thanks again for everyone uh taking the time to join us on this ama and uh let's call it here until next time see you guys thanks thank everybody. you thank you bye guys everybody. thank you bye